Hello, and welcome to the Peace Among Friends podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. So today we're going to be talking about goal setting. And just to start, you know, I want to talk about some of the important things that I would generally go over with a client whenever it comes to setting goals. So sometimes in therapy, we set goals that are therapeutic, and then sometimes we just set like general life goals. So today what we're going to be talking about is just the general life goals portion. Start by looking at just what the definition of a goal is. So just the basic definition of a goal is an aim or a desired result. So within that, you can have different types of goals. Like I said, you could have therapeutic goals. You might have work-related goals. You could have personal goals, fitness goals, maybe um, some kind of hobby that you want to get better at, which you know could be a personal goal as well, but I kind of think of them a little differently. But um, overall, you want to kind of have an idea of like, okay, what kind of goals do I want to set so we can start getting more specific? Because the thing is with goals is you want to make sure that you're always being specific. Anytime that you you know, are going to work towards something, if you want to get to that end result, you need to really be able to visualize not only yourself completing those goals, but visualize what steps are going to take you to get there. By having that extra moment of visualization and really getting your desired result more concrete in your mind makes you more likely to achieve that target goal. So the most common method that people use when looking at goal setting is something called the SMART goals. And so this is a method where each letter in the word SMART correlates to one of the characteristics of good goal setting. So to begin, the S stands for specific. Like I said, you want to be as specific as possible whenever you are setting goals. And after I go through what all the letters mean, we're going to go through some examples of some not so great terms of goals and then some better versions of those goals. So you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about, use it in real life and be able to figure out how to make really good goals for yourself. So the M stands for measurable. So anytime that you're setting a goal, you want to make sure that you can measure it. So that means like how long is it going to take you to be able to get to this, you know, first step, second step, third step. You want to make sure that you're measuring the amount of energy that you're going to put into it. So for example, like if you're doing a fitness goal, um, you know, I'd say I'm going to the gym twice a week. So we're measuring it, you know, two times a week is the amount of times that I'm going to the gym. And then I could say I'm going to do that for one month. So that's how we would specifically measure that goal. Next is A, and that stands for attainable. So that means that you want to make sure that it is something that you are actually going to be able to achieve. So for instance, you know, I'm not going to make a goal that says, you know, I'm going to adopt 6,000 cats next week because that's not really attainable or, you know, I mean, as fun as it would sound, I'm sure it would be really, really hard to manage 6,000 cats. I don't think I could do that. So I would call that an, an attainable goal. Another way of looking at attainable is, you know, you don't want to expect yourself to, you know, complete your goal in, you know, one day if it's, you know, more of a long-term goal. Um, of course, there are some goals that you can reach in a day, but you want to make sure that it's attainable. Like you're not going to try to take over the whole world in one day. You know, it's just not going to happen. You're not going to be able to make a million dollars in one day. It's not going to happen. And next we're going to look at realistic. So with realistic goals, you want to be honest with yourself and like, what are you actually capable of doing? You know, look at what have you been able to do in the past? You know, okay, well, I know in the past, anytime I tried to you know, using the gym example, if I tried to go to the gym, you know, more than three times a week, it was just too much. So I know, you know, there's no point in saying I'm going to go to the gym every single day. That's not really attainable for me. Or with the cats example, I had two cats in the past and those were enough. Those, (laughs) those a lot of cat action that I had going around and it was the perfect amount of cats for me. 6,000 is way too large of a number of cats. That's too many cats. So it is not attainable. It is not a good goal for me. And next we are going to 
look at, so, okay, we did R. So yeah, 6,000 cats is also not realistic because that's just crazy. <laughs> um, so next is T. And so that is time-based. So in addition to our goals being measurable, we want to make sure that we are specific in the deadlines that we are giving ourselves. So if you're saying, hey, I want to do this goal, don't just make it open-ended because if you do that, it's not really going to drive you to want to reach it. You know, you just kind of have this hypothetical end date in mind. You're less likely to reach that goal. So again, S stands for specific. M stands for measurable. A is attainable. R is relevant, and T is time-based. So an example of a bad goal, like a not-so-helpful version of a goal, would be I want to save money. So it's, you know, a good way to start. You know, like there's a lot of people out there who, you know, want to save money. I'm one of those people. You know, I'm always trying to save more money, be better with the money I have, and be able to budget better. So just by saying I want to save money, is not very specific. It's not measurable. You know, we don't have any kind of time frame put to it. It, you know, it could be attainable, you know, like we may be able to save money, but, and it, you know, it's relevant to, you know, our life. Like we may have the ability to be able to save money in some way, um, but it's not time-based. So a better way that we could say that goal would be, I will save $20 a week by cutting out coffee for the next month. So that's very specific. You know, you're saying exactly how you're going to save that money. You said just by isolating this one thing I'm spending money on that I can stand to get rid of, I will have an extra $20 per week. So, you know, we would have done a little bit of work, figured out how much money we were spending on coffee that week. And then we are being very specific of I'm only going to do this for a month. And so for that month, I would have, you know, 20 times four is 80 bucks. So you'd have an extra 80 bucks at the end of that week. Um, so that, you know, is a pretty good attainable, realistic goal that you could stand to do. Another one would be, um, so the bad version would be, I will lose weight. So again, it's not very specific. We're not measuring anything. You know, even if you say, I want to lose 10 pounds, you're being a little bit more specific and you are adding that measurable characteristic, but it's not really time-based and it's, you know, not as specific as it could be. So instead, a better way to say that would be, I will go to the gym two times a week for one hour at a time for the next month. So, you know, we're very, very specific. We're not even putting the focus on weight loss even at that point because, you know, weight loss really isn't something that you can control. Um, you know, you can't say like, okay, well, I'm going to lose like two pounds every single week. And, you know, as someone who's had a, <laughs> quite a weight loss journey in my life, um, it's really not as great of a goal, you know, to say, hey, I'm going to lose weight. Hey, I'm going to want to lose 10 pounds. It's a lot more frustrating and it's not really focusing as much on the effort and the action that you're putting into reaching that goal. So by saying instead, I'm going to go to the gym two times a week for an hour, you are being specific and you are measuring exactly the kind of force you're going to put into and you know that you can complete that goal within that month, as long as you go to the gym twice a week for an hour each time. So that is a way that we're being very, very specific in the kinds of goals that we are making. So now that we know a better idea of what goals are and are, we have a deeper understanding of goals, I just want to talk a little bit about our challenge from last week. So last week we talked about stress relief and coping skills, and our challenge was to identify a way that we could eliminate or reduce some of the stress in our life. And I worked on this, and um, I found it most effective to really just try to focus on things in the moment. So whenever we're talking about mindfulness, mindfulness literally just means being in the moment. So I tend to get very stressed out about generally the goals I set for myself, and sometimes I set goals that are a little unattainable. I put a, a good bit on my plate sometimes, and I've been trying over this last week to focus more on the basics, so like a really just like take it down a notch, Brooklyn, <laughs> is what I've had to say to myself. Um, 
So like I started a couple other projects this week and was realizing it was a lot. It was a lot that I had on my plate and, um, I realized I needed to look at what I was doing differently. I needed to, really, I just needed to give myself more time to do it. I think I was just probably being a little too impatient. So part of the way that I have reduced that stress is by giving myself more times to complete things and allowing myself patience. You know, it's very important that we're patient with ourselves because, you know, sometimes you can't expect anyone else to be patient with you. You got to just do it for yourself. So that's what I really had to go through with this last challenge of just, yeah, just trying to be more patient with myself, make better goals, make, you know, more realistic goals for myself. And that has helped reduce some of my stress. And so now, of course, our challenge response for this week is going to be goal related. So I would like you guys to comment down below if you feel like sharing some of the goals that you would like to set for yourself. I think it would be really nice, uh, you know, to talk to each other about some of the things that we're working on. Some people might be inspired um, in that sense. And I actually do have a goal that I'm doing, the example one that I shared of I'm going to the gym two times a week for one hour at least each time. Um, I've been going a little bit over an hour the last few times, so that's good. But my minimum is at least an hour. And I set a fitness goal for myself that I wanted to be able to do a mile in under seven minutes. So today I did my mile in six minutes and 45 seconds, and I'm really proud of myself. Um, Worked really hard, and now, you know, my next goal is going to be, okay, I want to run a mile in six minutes and 30 seconds. And so, you know, I'm just going little by little, (laughs) not trying to reinvent the wheel in a day, just, you know, having a little bit more patience with myself and I will try to come up with a new goal too, so I can share it next week. Um, and we can, you know, continue this wonderful discussion on goal setting. I hope you all are having a great day and I just congratulate you so much on taking this time to work on your mental health and to take care of yourself because it does take a lot of courage and bravery to do that and just give yourself a little pat on the back. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you soon.